Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar series. Today, I'm going to talk again about the coronavirus. I think that that's what's on everybody's mind. And I'm getting a lot of questions about it. We all read in the media. We all hear, listen. Questions abound. So I think it's important to mention the date. Today is March the 24th. And I recorded a video last week, but things are moving, things are changing. Let's talk about it now. So Merrill Lynch, in their scenario from last week, didn't think there was going to be a recession. Now people think the likelihood of a recession is higher. I'm not saying there necessarily will be one, but there could be one. So if we assume for a second that there is a recession because of what is going on with the coronavirus, businesses closed and etc. What is it going to look like as far as the houses we buy, the single family rental homes, right? Let's this is not my first time. I've been around this for 36 years. I've been through a few booms and busts. So let's look at the last one. The last one began with a boom in many markets, but not all markets in the US between 2004 and 2006, there was a major boom in housing prices. Places like Nevada, Arizona, Florida, California, the big cities went up, the prices in Phoenix nearly doubled between 2004 and 2006. If you remember what the media said, the media said, is this a bubble? Is the bubble going to burst? I was interviewed for Fortune magazine. Is the bubble going to burst? And indeed, the bubble burst. But yet again, it burst primarily and the most strongly in the markets where the boom had taken place. So the markets that were booming like crazy in Phoenix, prices almost doubled in two years. And then they absolutely tanked to the tune of about 70% in the recession during 2008 through 2011. Same in Vegas, same in Florida, to a large extent in California too. So that was the last boom and bust. If we have a recession as a result of the coronavirus and the closures of businesses and the economy suffering because of this, what is it gonna look like for single family homes? Of course, I don't really have a crystal ball. And I certainly don't want to sound like a wide-eyed optimist and say, oh, not much of an effect. There would be an effect. But notice, during the last recession, the first component was a major boom where prices went up crazy high. And then in those markets, there was a big bust. This time, if we have a recession, they're in the markets that we are looking at, such as Oklahoma and Central Florida, Louisiana, there was no major boom. There was no bubble. The prices in the markets we are looking at, like Oklahoma City, far from being in a bubble. Maybe if you look at San Francisco, you can say there was a bubble. Not interesting for us now. I'm talking about the homes that we are buying. So one component that was part and parcel of what happened last time is absent now. No crazy bubble. The other component, the last recession was precipitated from by housing and primarily lending. So lending was so loose. Some people were joking that a cat could get a loan. There were waiters buying 10 homes and people who don't have any business, not that waiters shouldn't qualify. There were waiters who couldn't qualify. There were people who couldn't qualify. There were almost cats who got loans. And so these were clearly subprime loans. When loans were very loose and they were given to people who should not have qualified, those were subprime loans. They were, to make things worse, they were packaged among other loans, sold to Wall Street with a grade that was 
top quality grade by the rating agencies. It was another crime pretty much. And then subprime loans were presented as good loans. So all of that was a second and very essential component of the recession in 2008. In fact, some people like, like to call it the subprime recession. That is absent now because as a result of the recession, there came out the Dodd-Frank rule and Congress made borrowing much more difficult. Everybody since 2011, 12 has been crying about how hard it is to get loans, even when your credit is good. So now the credit is, now the lending is much tighter. The down payments are no longer super low. During the boom that preceded the recession of 2008, some people could borrow up to 125% of the value of the home. Today, the, the least an investor, not a homeowner, needs to put down is 15%. That's the very least. And with PMI, where most people put 20%. So that element is missing as well. So no big bubble, crazy boom, no subprime lending. So now we are getting, if there is a recession, the effects are going to be completely different on housing. Now, remember, when you look at a house in San Francisco, where to build the house, including the land, might be $950,000, but the house sells for a million eight, there's a lot of air in the price. And that is a house that could go down if there's a recession. If we are buying a home in Oklahoma City for $170,000 and it costs $140,000 to build it, including the land, there's no air. It's just the building cost, the builder's interest and cost and profit. Very little air. So the probability that the markets will crash price wise in the Sun Belt states where we are buying is much lower. Again, I'm not trying to be just an optimist and say it's not going to go down. It might, but certainly it hasn't. By the way, during the last crash, the entire state of Texas didn't go up very much with the boom, didn't go down very much with the bust. Same for the state of Oklahoma. So not all states behaved like that. I believe the states we are looking at right now, since they are not in a bubble and since there's no air in the price, are not likely to lose a lot of value, just like in Oklahoma and Texas in the recession of 2008, 9, 10, 11. So that is what I see is happening. So the interest rates now are the lowest, heading to be the lowest in history. There was a perturbation where so much demand was for borrowing because of the low rates, but the rates actually went up a little bit, but they are settling down to be the lowest in history. So the interest rates are super low. We didn't have a bubble. The lending is pretty tight and people need homes, whether to use the homes as a rental or a home that they can buy and live in. Families need homes. There could be an effect based on the mood on the psyche of people. People say, how are people going to buy homes if they can't go and look at them? Well, people can go and look at homes today just using a lockbox and a code, and that could allow you for social distancing while you go and look at a home. People could look at homes much better now with the satellites and Google Earth and all the programs that let you see the inside of the home very well. Then you can go and visit with the lockbox, and people will still and still are buying homes. We're seeing it all around us. So I believe since we think very long term, continuing to do the same thing, buying brand new homes in good areas in the Sun Belt states, in large metropolitan areas where the numbers work, where the prices saw no bubble, no boom, getting the best loans in history, 30 years fixed with the lowest rates, still a very good thing to do. This is a long-term investment. Some people say, oh, no, I'm going to wait and see if the recession makes the prices go down, I'll buy cheaper. That may be the case. 
although I just discussed a couple of the reasons why in these specific markets, like in Oklahoma City, I think the chances of, even if there's a recession, prices going down is very slim. And it hasn't happened very much in the last recession, by the way. So again, we will have to see what happens. We will have to see their brilliant teams in many labs in the world, very well financed, working on a cure, working on solutions. We find out a lot more every day, but we don't know what will happen. To me as an investor and to the people I love who are buying homes all the time, somebody from my family just closed on a home on Monday in Oklahoma City. They're buying another one in Central Florida. They're going to close in a couple of months. I absolutely feel doing the same thing. This is a long-term investment. Again, please don't, don't accuse me of being an optimist. I'm just looking at it from the 30,000 foot view and looking at it as a long-term investment. The parameters are very solid right now. And if there is a recession, We've already seen the worst recession not affect the state of Oklahoma and some other states. I don't believe it will affect most of the markets that we are looking at right now, such as Oklahoma. Thank you so much. We'll talk again in a few days, maybe a week. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.